my life story is that uh, if you work hard, you can do miracles here. We are here because we got help. We didn't do it on our own. So our job is to pass it on to the next generation the same thing, that you need to help others. When I sold my business, I shared my fortune with every employee in the company. I felt very strongly that without the people, we could not succeed in business. People made us successful. I always felt very strongly that those of us who have had the good fortune in this country, that we should give back to our origin, our country, which provided us free education and made everything possible. Millions of people have immigrated to the United States from all corners of the world. Some are fleeing persecution, others sought new opportunities. Regardless of color, creed, faith, or national origin, generations of immigrants have prospered in America, even beyond their imaginations, through their hard work and enterprise. These new Americans have helped enrich the U.S driving the economy to unseen heights and sharing their riches. The life of Suri Siegel, born in the part of India that is now Pakistan, is a quintessential American success story. He overcame adversity in his country of origin and became a successful and esteemed crop scientist, seedsman, and entrepreneur who is making a profound difference in the lives of millions of people in the developing world. Surrender Mohan Siri Siegel was born in 1934 in a small town, Guliana, in the then undivided British-occupied Indian province of Punjab. He was the fifth of eight children of a Sikh mother, Sushila Kar Vadhadvan, and a Hindu father, Fakir Chan Shaji Siegel, a disciple and follower of Mahatma Gandhi, and member of the Indian National Congress working for India's independence from British rule. And he grew up with very strong Gandhian ideals, and he had a very happy childhood up until a certain point. When partition came to India in 1947, When the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. Surrey was 13 when the British Raj finally left, dividing the subcontinent into two nations, India and Pakistan. The violence and bloodshed that followed claimed countless lives. In the midst of the mayhem, Shah Ji Siegel decided to send three of his six daughters with his oldest son, Badar, to the relative safety of India. So his dad woke Suri up uh, about five o'clock in the morning and said, you have to come and help me get your sisters to the train station, help carry the luggage. And so they got to the train station and were, and were horrified to find that it was so crowded. My two sisters got squeezed into one compartment and my brother got squeezed into another compartment. And Toshi, who's uh, Santosh, who's 11 years old, had no place and she was put into another compartment. And Suri's father, in a panic as the train was pulling away, pushed Suri on the train and said, take care of your sister. The train ride, which lasted several days, was terrifying for the Siegel siblings. Every time the train stopped, there were bloody bodies all around the train tracks where people were being killed. Once his sisters were temporarily safe with a friend on the India side, young Siri went to Delhi to find their uncle. Homeless for weeks, he slept in empty train cars and attended evening prayer meetings held by Mahatma Gandhi, who was trying to hold people together in the chaos. While sitting at Gandhi's feet each evening, Suri heard ideas that reinforced what his father had always stressed in their home about inclusion and equality, including gender equality, that girls deserve the same good education as boys. That message soaked in deeply, and the seeds were planted for Surrey's lifelong priorities. The Siegel family eventually reunited at a refugee camp. Though they lost all their possessions, land and business, they were grateful to be alive. No one in the family was killed. It was, Surrey considered it a miracle that they all survived. 
the Seagulls rebuilt their lives in Amritsar, near the Pakistan border. Suri completed high school and went on to earn bachelor's and master's degrees and honors in botany in India. His dream was now to study plant genetics with Harvard professor Paul C. Mangelsdorf, a giant in the field. Harvard University accepted Suri, and he arrived in the United States in the summer of 1959. Surrounded by great thinkers, scientists, and visionaries, Surrey thrived under the mentorship of Professor Mangelsdorf and others. In the summer of 1962, Surrey met a beautiful German girl, Ada Jelinski, whose visa was being sponsored by a political science professor at Harvard. The family spoke fluid German and helped Ada learn English. Edo, remarkably, had a similar refugee past, although the two didn't share that information with each other. She came from a part of uh, Germany that is now Poland. Her family escaped in the dead of night and went by uh, horse cart to get out of uh, danger. And they ended up meeting each other and it was like firecrackers. She just thought he was wonderful. Uh, he was exotic, she said and he thought she was absolutely over the, over the top gorgeous. In June 1963, Suri successfully defended his PhD thesis, which explored changes that occur when corn is hybridized with its two wild relatives, Diocinti and Tripsicum. Now it was decision time. I had uh, a couple of choices, either to go back to India, uh, and, but I also had a visa as a trainee visa after graduation. My major professor suggested that uh, before I go back, uh, it will be good if I get practical training. In September 1963, Surrey arrived in Des Moines, Iowa, in a car he purchased for $200 to work as postdoctoral fellow at what was then a regional seed company called Pioneer Hybrid Corn Company. But before leaving Boston or Cambridge, I left a lot of my belongings right in Cambridge uh, that, uh, with the intention that after a few months I'll be coming back, uh, maybe leaving for India. Pioneer was founded by Henry A. Wallace, who served as U.S. Vice President under Franklin D. Roosevelt. Suri was thrilled to launch his career there and work alongside Dr. William Lacey Brown, another doyen in the field of plant genetics. Suri found the Midwest and Iowa extremely welcoming. Midwest is, uh, I, I fell in love. The people were very kind, very helpful, uh, very ethical, very trustworthy, uh, and uh, it, was, uh, it was a fantastic experience. Within a few months, Etta joined Suri in Iowa. It was a nice summer. We had a lot of fun doing, exploring Iowa a little bit. And uh, of course, it's very different from Boston. So it was nice. Bill Brown was highly impressed with Suri, and the two formed an excellent relationship. Dr. Brown was such an easygoing man, just like Suri is. And so I can see why they were quite compatible. Halfway through the fellowship, Dr. Brown offered Suri a job as a tropical corn breeding specialist in Jamaica. He asked me, should I take that job? You know, uh, Jamaica is an exotic place. And as a young person, I mean, you like adventure. So it sounded good. And I said, sure, you take it. On September 26, Suri and Etta were married in the home of Bill and Alice Brown with a small reception for the couple. The next day, Suri and Etta left for Jamaica to pursue Dr. Brown's dream of developing a hybrid of corn maize adapted to the tropics. It takes normally six, seven years to develop a new product, but tropical countries have an advantage because you can get two, sometimes you can get more than two crops per year. You are not limited to one crop, so the cycle goes quick. In six years, Sue returned what started as a research project into a profitable venture with five hybrids. Certainly, we were also making money for the company, for the headquarters. It was a little eye-opener that there is a business possibility. So that's how the whole international business of Pioneer got started. Suri's bosses were impressed with what he did in Jamaica and now offered a big new assignment for him. I got uh, in the mail a letter, uh, would you be interested to come uh, to Des Moines, return to Des Moines 
and uh, uh, start the international uh, program. Suri and Etta returned to Iowa in 1970, now with two children, Kenny and Ben, who were born during their stint in Jamaica. Over 24 years, Suri built the Pioneer Overseas Corporation and helped make Pioneer Hybrid International a Fortune 500 company in the process. He was traveling all over the world. He was basically gone at least two weeks out of every month, and which was not always easy. With his uh, special brand of, uh, of uh, personality and strategic thinking and uh, initiative, he started a hundred separate businesses overseas. I think he may be the person who brought hybrid maize worldwide in the sense of a viable commercial profit ability crop for the local farmers. Bill Brown was greatly impressed with Suri's talent for creating new relationships and lucrative partnerships, and Suri appreciated Dr. Brown's leadership style. Suri looked at Dr. Brown as a, kind of a father image. Well, he had a lot of influence because uh, of his uh, way of thinking and uh, uh, that uh, he would uh, empower the people but never tell people what to do. That. Uh, principle I followed throughout uh, that you don't tell the people what uh, what to do but you uh, empower the people. Pioneer Overseas registered outstanding growth under Surrey's leadership. By 1988 the company had more than 1600 employees in 60 countries with 27 breeding stations. I had visas for 72 individual countries. I mean, when Surrey left, we were in the neighborhood of 55, 60% of the uh, corporate profits. Soon after the retirement of Bill Brown, Surrey left Pioneer and took a chief operating officer position with a company in Belgium on the cutting edge of new technologies. Then in 1989, Surrey launched his own entrepreneurial career and set up four companies. One was a small seed company in India that he acquired full ownership of as part of an agreement with Pioneer. The company, ProAgro, focused on four crops, corn, millet, sorghum, and sunflower. By incorporating biotechnology and IT innovations to the Indian seed industry, ProAgro became the largest hybrid seed company in India. One of the key knacks that Dr. Suri has is finding the right people for right position at the right time. He always has said, I'm not worried about profitability. I want to make sure that people are top of the line. He was the best boss I ever had, you know, and he, he was very likable and trustworthy. I never seen him lose his temper. He surrounded himself usually with very good people also, very professional people. He put the people first in a lot of his, his thoughts and, and his actions as as a manager in his career. Keen business acumen, ability to see things far ahead, domain knowledge, and strong business ethics also define Surrey's business career. Is wrapped around business ethics. Uh, he, the message he always sends is, obviously you want to do things, you want to do things right, and you want to do things in the best way possible, but um, we don't cut corners, you don't, try to um, cross any lines, just doing things that are right and doing things that are the best for, for the people that you're trying to help. He uh, has, has always impressed me as uh, 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 a strategic thinker. Uh, he is always one step ahead thinking uh, where, where the business might go. Um, how the business might grow. And I think it's a very unique situation for a scientist in general in the seed business uh, to go into any kind of management role, business management role. Dr. Siegel was able to to really accomplish also as a, as a business manager. That is very, very unique and, and I would say very rare in, in, in my industry. In 1998, after building ProAgra for 10 years, Surrey and Etta received an offer from the German giant, now Bayer, that they couldn't refuse. When they received the multi-million for the sale of these companies, they shared the wealth 
with every single person that um, worked for the company from the T-boy to the drivers to the executives and everyone. Several of the 650 ProAgra employees went on to be among a virtual who's who of leadership in the seed industry in India. Years later, Surrey did the same when he sold another seed business, Mizer High Tech, which was based in Egypt. The proceeds were shared with all the employees, just like he did with ProAgra. Surrey and Etta decided to devote the bulk of the money they received from the sale of ProAgra to help the rural poor in Surrey's country of origin. Before embarking on their philanthropic activities, the couple consulted with their four children, Kenny, Ben, Oliver, and Vicky. When the company was sold and we realized the majority of the money would go to the foundation, it seemed like a very natural step for us because as a family we were always learned about kids that did not have the opportunities that we have. The Sagals are very low key, so their American story is a modest one. Once they achieved success, they looked at who should benefit from their wealth. They view themselves as trustees, as stewards, stewards of the wealth that they made. They wanted to give it back to rural India because farmers had been such a part of his um, seed business um, and his roots being in India, that seemed inappropriate. He really felt that this was the right time for him to move to the next uh, stage in his life is getting into philanthropy aspect because I think that was, that's uh, always have been in his mind. Surya and Etta set up two foundations, one in the United States and the other in India, with the goal of making a positive difference in the lives of the rural poor in India. Since I am from agriculture, my desire was to do whatever I can to uplift the people in, in, in the villages, in the, in the rural India, where the greatest poverty lies. We always felt that we should do something for India. So we always felt very strongly about that because he saw the need, obviously, and he felt that he got such a very good education there. Otherwise, nothing would have been possible for him in this country. We really saw the difference uh, that we had made in the villages where, we, where they were growing our seed corn, where we worked with farmers. It was tremendous, the development that took place. This time, we gave the Sagal Foundation to the side of the broccoli. So, it was gone. So, we tried to try it. So, it was good germination. It was also the seed of the seed. And we put it in the field. So, it was very good. 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 So, we are very happy with the Sagal Foundation. If someone has a problem with us, बीज की वो बताएंगे तो उसको भी लगाएंगे हम तो इन्होंने जो भी कुछ हमें दिया है। We feel that if we want to reduce poverty in India, we must work on agriculture, must work on farmers having better crops, farmers must have better opportunities to grow uh, as much possible in a sustainable way, not destroying the land. Siegel Foundation began its work in Maywat a largely underdeveloped region just 39 kilometers south of New Delhi, with an impoverished population of about one million and a severe water shortage in the area. Surinetta felt that if they could make a difference in a place like that, then what they could create in terms of solutions to poverty would be applicable everywhere else. From the beginning, the Foundation's goals were to address the most pressing needs of India's poorest rural communities, food security, water security and good governance with a primary focus on the empowerment of women. He agreed with Kofi Annan that no rural development is possible without the empowerment of girls and women. हमने बहुत सारे की पेंसिल रोकी हुई थी वो भी सब की पेंसिल आने लग गई सिलाई सेंटर भी चले हमारे गांव में सौ चाले बहुत कम थे आज 125 सौ चाले बन चुके हैं सेगल पांडिसन आया उस दिन से हमारी सारी स्कूल में सौंदर्यकरण का काम चल रहा है हमारी बच्चियां जो कंप्यूटर से वंचित थी 
उनके लिए फ्री कंप्यूटर कोर्स चलाया है और भी जो भी सरकारी योजनाएं जो भी आती है हमारे अनाज नहीं मिलता था नए राशन कार्ड वालों को हमसे बार बार सैगल फाउंडेशन की टीम ने आकर मीटिंग की मीटिंग में हमें बताया फिर हमारे सबको अनाज मिलने लग गया पानी की व्यवस्था हो गई भाई संगठन में कितनी शक्ति है फॉर मोर देन 20 इयर्स सीगो फाउंडेशन टीम्स हैव वर्कड इन पार्टनरशिप विद कम्युनिटी मेंबर्स नाउ इन मोर देन 10 इंडियन स्टेट्स एंड स्टिल एक्सपेंडिंग टू बिल्ड देयर कैपेसिटीज टू टेक रिस्पांसिबिलिटी फॉर देयर ओन डेवलपमेंट and bring about a more promising future for the farm families that make up rural India. The Siegel Foundation scientists, the the engineers that work there, there's hydraulics experts who who are on staff who've invented technologies that are making a difference. Schools are being transformed so that kids are learning digital literacy and life skills and girls are coming back to school because they're making sure the schools have, you know, the government schools have bathrooms for both boys and girls, which wasn't the case and isn't the case in most of the schools. Siegel Foundation's research and internship programs cast a wide net to reach students around the world. The foundation's work has been supported by donors and partners throughout the US and across the globe. Dr. Yogesh Shah, an Iowa resident since 1994, is a long-time Siegel Foundation donor. Even I saw his work in New Delhi in Gurgaon I realized that how good the work they were doing that it was very transparent very scientific very research based the reason i after 5 years my wife and i'm committed to and would love to support sekal foundation work is because they have done what they have told us they want to make sure they want to give back here also a lot to honor suri's mentor the seagulls helped establish the william l brown center at the missouri botanical garden in st louis Suri and Ida have also supported educational and environmental causes in the US and especially in Iowa such as the Iowa Preservation Foundation, Des Moines Community Foundation, and the Iowa State University. They have long supported the World Food Prize Foundation, an iconic Iowa institution that honors leaders in the global food supply. They are involved intimately in our youth program and we uh send some of those students around the world for these amazing internships every year we send one or two to the Segal Foundation uh in India the Segals were also instrumental in the renovation of the 19th century building that serves as the headquarters of the foundation earning it the coveted LEED platinum certification the LEED platinum is the highest level of energy efficiency and resource conservation I was inspired to do that by the Segal Foundation's building in India which is LEED Platinum and of course the uh, Segal Foundation and Segal family were very generous in their personal contribution to our uh, project Today Suri and Ed spend most of their time in their home in Captiva a small Florida island on the Gulf Coast but it is Iowa that they call their home. The joke at our house is that when somebody asks my mom with her heavy accent, "Where are you from?" she'll always say Iowa. And of course that leads to a few confused looks from our the store clerk or the grocery store uh cashier because she doesn't sound like an Iowan. But this is where they raised their family. This is where they grew up together also in their relationship. Iowa well suited the lifestyle of the Seagulls, who lived in the same house for more than a quarter century. All their four children and nephew Jay Seagull are products of Iowa's public schools. People are they are hard working, very disciplined. They are not uh, extravagant. They don't show off their wealth if they have it. And they have good values. You know they're very simple people, very humble, and they don't believe in extravagance or living. So I think um, after whatever they have, they like to share. Suri was instrumental in fellow Indian American Dr. Neeru Pandeya getting settled in Des Moines in 1964. Pandeya says his friend's commitment to philanthropy long preceded his wealth. In my book, Suri was always charitable. He was always in philanthropy. he was always giving of himself 
Suri has always been kind to me and many other Indians. He has helped a ton of people that I know personally get ahead in their respective field. And being a kind man that he is, there are many, many, and since he was deprived so much as a young one, he always reached out to help people who needed his help. Surrey Siegel considers himself lucky to have a number of great teachers and spiritual guides, from his mentor Bill Brown to Mahatma Gandhi. Throughout his life, Surrey internalized Gandhi's commitment to social justice, decency, and fairness and equality. However, his North Stars in life, as well as in philanthropy, started with his father, Shaji Siegel, a man of great principles in both business and personal life. And those same values continue with his wife, Etta, his partner every step of the way, who shares his vision and who has collaborated fully with Surrey in his business and philanthropic efforts from the start. Surrey Siegel embodies the soul and potential of America. Its hopes and dreams, his American journey is not just a story of a person shaping his own future and accomplishing success. It's also about how he used the success he achieved in America to create an ecosystem of sorts that provides people in faraway villages with opportunities to live more secure, prosperous, and dignified lives.